Hello everyone, my name is Jesus de los Weis and I'm the Software Development Director for Carrefour uh, Spain for the e-commerce department and uh, today I will talk to you uh, about our experience replacing our commercial search by our own search. A search we can control, we can control the roadmap and we can control the technology behind the search. So, um, Well, here is my contact and uh, my colleague's contact, Borja, uh, that he's going to uh, talk later. And well, if you need uh, some information about us, uh, you can send our codes and see our profiles. Well, just before getting into search, um, I would like to talk about a little bit about Carrefour Spain. Carrefour Spain is a company that belongs to Carrefour Group. Carrefour Group is one of the biggest retailers in the world. Uh, it has more than 12,000 stores in uh, 30 countries. And uh, specifically talking about uh, Carrefour e-commerce, we have an e-commerce with uh, two sites, food site and non-food site. The first one has 27,000 food products and 7 million of customers in our, our loyalty club. Uh, we have a marketplace in the food side with 3 million of products from 1.5 thousand sellers. So, the platform that uh, makes possible this business is our uh, e-commerce platform. But uh, we are in the middle of a migration where uh, we are migrating for this kind of all-in-one solution that you can uh, hire from traditional vendors to a microservices architecture built by our engineers, by Carrefour staff. So, um, it, uh, this project is a four-year project to replace the whole platform. What we are going to do is, or what we are doing right now, it's taking uh, different pieces of the uh, e-commerce platform, the, exist, the old one, like the search, the cloud catalog, the pricing engine, the, for example, the checkout flow, and deploy this uh, functionality into a web serv uh, microservices architecture in the cloud. It's 100% native cloud native, so that means that it's built over Kubernetes with Kubernetes in mind and scalability, elastic scalability. It's deployed in Google Cloud and uh, all is based on open source technologies uh, because it's our philosophy. And uh, the first uh, site was launched in 2019, and so far it's working fine. And well, uh, we don't have any major issue till now. So, talking about search now, this time uh, is the part of this architecture that we replaced last year. And uh, it was a really tough challenge because uh, we had to replace a commercial search, which was uh, included in this kind of all in one uh, platforms. And to do that, we had to face some challenges. The first one was understand the customer behaviors. So, um, in the old one, the metrics that we had was uh, very poor. We, we didn't know what, what was happening uh, from the side of the customer because uh, we don't know what they were looking for, uh, if um, the, the search was very accurate or not. So we have no idea about what is happening in terms of the search. So the second one is to build a proper search uh, experience with a very um, accurate user experience. And uh, well, we have to define our relevant ranking too, our relevant ranking policies. And uh, we have to avoid 
uh, to configure manually a lot of rules that they are very difficult to maintain over the time. We were looking for something more automatic, like AI or uh, machine learning. And uh, we have to generate a catalog data feed because in this kind of platform where all this includes, uh, you don't have to worry about the catalog data feed. It's part of the solution. So we had to give a proper data feed with enough data and very well prepared to be indexed by a search engine. And uh, we have to integrate the e-commerce, uh, the search engine into our e-commerce platform. We have to deploy it into the Google Cloud, which is our cloud, and complete the uh, whole project in seven months, which is uh, yeah, quite aggressive. But finally, thanks to the teams involved in this, in this project, we did it. So at this point, we already know what to do, but the next question is how we can do it. So to do that, we went to the market and see what options did we have. And the options we had was mainly three. Uh, the first one, uh, it was about to build a proper search engine from scratch using our team. But the problem is we realized that we haven't got um, this kind of uh, knowledge, this kind of expertise, because we have a very good developer, very good architects, uh, integration engineers, but we don't have search engineers and we don't have uh, data engineers. So uh, uh, at least it's gonna it, it, it's it's uh, gonna take a long time to to build a proper search engine. Maybe we have we can have something an MVP maybe in two years. So it wasn't affordable for, for the business. So the second option, the option B, was to hire a service as a service solution. This is the most attractive uh, option because the only thing that you have to do is to generate the catalog data feed, plug it into or integrate it into the uh, service as a service solution, and then start consuming APIs. But from our point of view, this can work for small catalog, but uh, having a market presence with three, mo three million of products um, and very different kind of problems, we prefer to control all the algorithms inside the uh, search engine and integrate the search engine in a seamless way with the data we have in Carrefour. So to extend the search engine, this option it wasn't the best for us. And we had to do all the user experience as well. And the option C, uh, it was to look for a partner with existing solution that you can take and deploy into your uh, cloud and build your uh, search experience over an existing solution. So this is what we did actually. But with the technology is not enough. We needed a company with a culture that fits into our, our culture. So we are a very uh, customer-centric company. So we, we were looking for a company like this with customer-centric philosophy, open and transparent, collaborative, agile and adaptive, because um, what happens in the retailing, retailing industry is uh, we are constantly changing and focus in US because uh, what happens is it's not only about the technology, it's how you present that technology to your customer, how your customer is using your technology. And of course, the technology, the technology ha has to be based on a microservice architecture because we have a microservices architecture. So we were looking for um, a solution where you can select the different components, install the components that you want into your application and use those components. So it has to be also uh, based on open source as the rest of the platform. Easy to deploy and operate, that's very important for us because uh, in the past we suffered a lot of pain uh, trying to operate 
this kind of solution where you have the black box and you don't know what is happening inside the, the box. And uh, it has to be a proved solution for um, high demand of traffic. Because we had campaigns like Black Friday where we, we suffer a huge spikes of traffic and we, we have to give service during those spikes. So when you have the, um, the pattern in place, you know what to do, then you have to do a, plan, a planning. And this is the project plan. The first stage of the project plan was to discover what to do, what, what uh, was our assumption, assumptions and validate our assumptions. And overall uh, to discover what this technology, this uh, search technology can do with our data and modify the part that maybe we, we don't like. And uh, the second phase, the second stage, it was to build the proper solution integrating with our e-commerce platform. The third one was uh, the hardening, to fix those things you forgot in the building phase or you did in a bad manner. And uh, the last one is to tune all the application, all the search engine within the e-commerce platform in the Google Cloud. So you have to adjust the memory, the course, the Kubernetes staff, and uh, of course the Elasticsearch, because Elasticsearch is the core of the, of the, of the search engine. So this is how it looks, all the plan, I mean. We start with a pilot, not a very fancy interface, but it demonstrates all the things that we wanted to do. From that, we pass to a beta. The beta was in production during three months around, and it was uh, almost fully functional, and it, and it was leaving service within three, two, three months. And uh, the last one is the one that we have now in Catapult.es, and uh, while well, it's fully functional, it's covered all the verticals that we have, food and food, uh, the global one. And so far it's working fine and people like to use our, our sets, at least as we know. So at this point, I'm going to uh, introduce my colleague, uh, Borja. Borja uh, helped us with all the user experience uh, about search and well, he can tell us all the process that he lived with us. So Borja, uh, whenever you want. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much um, for the invitation, of course. And, uh, you know, it's been, I'm very personally um, linked to this project. Uh, it, it was an absolute joy to work with you guys, uh, and especially after the, the, you know, the marvelous results I obtained, right? both from a design and, and a performance perspective. Right, uh, hello folks, um, uh, I'm, my name is Borja, I'm from Empathy, I was the uh, design lead of this project, um, which we are still working on, um, but we're going to present today this very first um, stage of it. And I'm going to talk uh, for the next five minutes on design, okay? both on the challenges that we overcame and also the process we followed. So before I get into the matter, um, I would like to stress uh, the need to uh, tackle a search project from a, an experiences side of things as well, okay? I've been working on, uh, for more than 15 years on, on search projects. Uh, on, on relevancy modeling, on, uh, you know, uh, algorithms, uh, features, and again, it does not matter how much time you spend on technology, okay, you, you, you must have, of course, relevant pro uh, uh, results uh, for people to find, but the how people experience, how people connect with brands, the emotions that you're able to evoke through the experiences is as critical or even more than the results on their own, 
okay so always please please spend enough time enough is never enough <laughs> on the experiences because um, it will be a very very uh, important um, aspect of your success right so uh, moving into the search project in uh, Carrefour so the first thing we um, looked at was we have a massive catalog I mean we're talking about three million products and again the diversity and complexity of intent it's brutal I mean it is huge we have people searching for um, tomatoes and apples as part of the food groceries and as well we have people searching for a mattress or searching for a barbecue or searching for a TV set so again you guys work in, in search you know that the patterns used to access those very different uh, set of um, uh, items it's very very diverse okay the, 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 the way you help people find explore and research on those uh, item discoveries is totally opposite so that was a main main um, challenge the second one it, it's very it's aligned to this one it's whether from an experience perspective how do we take people from a global search box okay where you can search in the whole of Carrefour into very vertical very specific search um, vertical search experiences that are highly driven by the characteristics of say um, ink cartridges for printers or a TV set whether you want a curve or not uh, or the size of the screen so these sort of things really uh, were a big big thing that we needed to uh, coherently bring into the experiences and the journeys of people navigating, searching and exploring through uh, Carrefour. Uh, the third item and as important as well is the diversity in this case of personas uh, and the data behind it. Uh, we have Carrefour is very fortunate to have very a very loyal customer base uh, and they are very rich data sets uh, to do with the purchase history on and off as well and as other signals that can be used to personalize uh, search uh, on the other end we have people that's not anonymous but they have no track records regarding purchase but we know that they are in a landing page um, and we know that they have an intent declared so how can we use all those um, inputs so that the experience is a good fit for all those personas and lastly uh, this is more to do with a commercial thing as well as as a customer experience but um, in the on-site um, sorry uh, offline Carrefour has got a, a, a catalog and online it is a bigger catalog due to the marketplace so people should be aware that products have been sorted in a different way uh, they should be aware that the logistics the uh, the vendor information has to be surfaced and all these things the, uh, that also need to be very well entangled into the uh, experience good so how do we go across knowing this how do we uh, go across uh, into the design so the phase one it's always about understanding the context okay so we need to understand how people use search previously so we normally go through the analytics uh, we go of course through the more importantly through the intended behaviors how do we want people to feel throughout this part of the uh, through the search journey when they open the search box before they start typing when they start typing so we'll go through the brand values we go through the design principles the visual language that has to be used and we start working on the user journey mapping okay so we are able to associate emotions to each of those moments of the journey right so now we can move into phase two now we can start sketching this 
mobile um, um, sketches and diagrams and we can move on into mockups, wireframes, mockups, animated mockups, prototypes, user testing uh, and as these iterations move on you end up with a, a, a very complex um, uh, diagram with the user flows that incorporate all these personas, all these use cases, all this personal data uh, and all this transparency and trust controls that we always seek to, to, uh, to obtain so that uh, consumers really feel bonded and feel connected to the brand uh, uh, through using search. That was my time. My time is up, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I'll talk to you after, um, after uh, Jesus finishes and during the, the Q&A session. All back to you, Jesus. Thank you. Okay, Borja, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, it was uh, very good uh, to listen to you, how you did all this work with us. And uh, well, to continue with this, uh, I would like to talk about some pieces of architecture that for us are the most important ones because it's, the, it's how we integrate actually the empathy solution into our system. And uh, we can start with the catalog for generation because uh, it was very tough to do. It, it took me time. It was a, a project itself. And um, well, what we did is uh, we, we took all the things that we already had in uh, the e-commerce platform, like the prices, uh, product inventory and promotions, microservices. We synchronized everything from the uh, central systems, from the PIM, from the pricing uh, engine, from the uh, uh, inventory. Upload all this information via a Kafka queue. And then what happened is when you have all this information distributed in domains, it's very difficult to generate data feed. So the most uh, easy way to, to, to do this the easiest way to do this is to take all this information, all the movement that happens within these microservices, and then store everything into a single file per document, per single document per, per product. Sorry. So when you have the whole picture of the product in a single document, you can store this kind of documents in the database aggregate every, every single movement, like prices, inventory, and so on, and then extract everything using a, a data pro cluster, as part job, actually. It takes everything and transforms this information into a cloud storage. So into a cloud storage, we have several files with, with all the information that we need to index in uh, the, 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 the Elasticsearch and the Empathy solution. So what it does, uh, the empathy solution takes these files, do some magic around this, and uh, store everything into the, the Elastic cluster. The other part of the uh, architecture that it's uh, very worthy to, to, to talk about is the enrichment data feed. What it does, actually, enrichment data feed is listen to customer. It takes all the events that comes from the front end, store this event into parquet files thanks to uh, Cloud Data Flow, and then we had a uh, data pro cluster with several Spark jobs that takes all the insight from these files, and with this insight, we store this information into the Elastic cluster and in MongoDB for a statistical purpose and for, uh, to make the um, uh, search smarter. Because thanks to this, we have uh, next queries, we have related tags, we have uh, auto-suggestions, we have all the fancy stuff around the search. And the last one, it's uh, how we integrate the API into our existing e-commerce solution. So what we use is the back and forth front-end pattern. So uh, with these microservices, the, the um, search presentation API microservice, 
where it does its launch, impel several requests to price, product inventory promotion, and others, and to the search API, and compose a single response that we send to Empathy X. And Empathy X is the, com is the component from Empathy in charge of show the result list in the best way for the customer. So with all the user experience that we designed in the in the in the previous stage of the of the project. Talking about components, we we want to talk about the components uh, from the perspective of uh, what we do for us, what what means for us for Carrefour. So, for example, the indexing process, uh, the operational team is. It's uh, very happy because the indexing process almost never failed. We have a, a success rate about 98%. The enrichment indexing, the other one, almost never failed too. And uh, we have the tooling too. And with the tooling, uh, the marketers are quite happy as well because compared with the other, the console is very easy to use. The, they don't have so many rules, manual rules to maintain. So because the, the, the search engine itself can react to the change of the interests of our customers. So the only thing is to see if the search is behaving in a proper way and adapt some things, some, some, um, uh, adjust some, the, the weights of some attributes. And boost and boost some products. And it helps as well with uh, promotional stuff because uh, now they can insert banners into the result list. And with this banner, they can sell this space to other providers. So, well, it's something that the marketers do and they, they do several other things. And uh, the last one is to talk about search, the search components. And uh, well, apart from all the uh, user experience that offers to our customer, the the accuracy of the um, of the search, what really it uh, helps for the careful engineers, because it's, it, this is something that people don't use to talk. But well, for us it was a big improvement because the productivity of our developers increased a lot because the only thing that they have to do is consume APIs and focus on the user experience or other integration of the task that they are, ha that they are, they are working on. And I forget those things of uh, understand the black box uh, about the search and uh, the behavior, the unexpected behavior that is the old search had. So um, at this point, I would like to share with you a small story about uh, the crisis well, we lived with all the COVID-19 stuff, all the COVID-19 crisis. So uh, it was a small story about masks and how the, the search can react to the demand of our customers. So the thing is, when people thinking mask, before the COVID-19 crisis, people were thinking about beauty mask. But when all the crisis happened, all the questions come up, what people want uh, when they uh, look for mask, they are, they are thinking in uh, sanitary mask. They want sanitary masks. So, we took some information from our uh, search, from the search insights, and we see uh, that before the COVID-19 crisis, people was uh, querying for masks to find all beauty masks, all, all kinds of beauty masks. And for sanitary masks, it was a few persons uh, looking for um, 
sanitary mask, but the rest of the, the people were looking for actually uh, beauty masks. But during COVID-19 crisis, apart from increase a lot the, the queries with the uh, word mask, what people were uh, looking for was a sanitary mask. So compared with others during the COVID-19 crisis, it's uh, a bit different. So what happens in terms of the search? So the search adapts automatically all the auto-suggestions and the next queries as well. So here you can see the word mascarilla, that means uh, mask, and the suggestions is look for mascarilla sanitaria, which means sanitary mask. And apart from that, the search automatically suggests gloves, and um, sanitary gel as well, because they are the people people used to look for masks and then look for gloves and then look for um, sanitary gel. So the search can uh, realize this thing and adapt all the suggestions based on this. And that's another thing. It's how automatically the Brazil list uh, promotes the masks, the sanitary masks of the beauty masks. So in this example, you can see uh, the difference between the sanitary mask and the beauty mask in terms of uh, promotions, the, the results. So one, two, and three are boosted automatically. Actually, the, the, the most boosted uh, result is the second one, but uh, there are some business rules that promote the, the first one. It's basically because it belongs to the food side and it has more priority. But if we look for uh, uh, beauty masks, we find out that no one of them are boosted because they are at this time, they are not very important for people. So, the results of all of this, what was the results? So, in the green line we, is, the, is the point in the, in the time where we uh, launch our uh, empathy search into the public. We had the beta version for a while, but for the, uh, for the public, for the rest of the customer, we launched this the, in the end of the January. And uh, from the very beginning, what we can see is uh, a spike in the number of uh, queries that the customers that's against the, the um, search engine and we increased from almost two to almost four just from the very beginning and that means we increase the number of search per session per user in a 48 percent so but at the same time what is very important is the abandonment rate of customers that use the search decrease in a 49%. So people stay in our uh, website more time, playing with the search, navigating and so on, and fortunately buying something. And uh, well, of course, these two uh, ticks that you can see in during maybe the second, um, the second week of March, that's because the coronavirus crisis, because we face a lot of traffic. And by the way, the search uh, coped with the traffic with no major issues. Well, next step, just to finalize uh, the talk. So um, we have several things to do in the future in terms of search. Uh, we have to 
still improving all the search in terms of performance, the accuracy, the, um, the variability, and uh, the evolution itself of the search engine. The second one, uh, the second most important thing that we have to do this year is uh, the navigation, browsing, the catalog browsing. We are planning to use this solution for the product listing pages, for, for example, the generation catalog data feed to be integrated with Google Shopping, and uh, all of things uh, related to catalog. Uh, the, we are planning to place the search in the middle of the e-commerce platform and uh, use the search for almost everything related to the catalog. And uh, the third one is to still working in contextualization. That means uh, we want uh, to get all this information we have in aggregated like us. We have a lot of uh, information about our customers and uh, improve the personalization if we can do it one-to-one, -one, that takes a lot of uh, challenges like privacy that we need to solve. But uh, it's a path that uh, we want to, to walk. Um, well, that's all. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, I hope uh, this uh, was very interesting for you. and. Uh, Again, uh, less less for listen. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Hisa. Uh, thank you, Borja. Uh, so uh, we don't have much time for for questions, but we do have a couple of minutes. Um, I'll try to summarize them here. Uh, so uh, you mentioned um, a. Um, uh, uh, you mentioned the, the, the current situation and COVID-19 that affected uh, the way the search worked, which was great. And uh, we had a question from Angel that um, wanted to hear how that impacted some other areas uh, like groceries and staples, like goods, uh, like uh, food and uh, basic, basic needs. Okay, so the first impact that we had uh, was uh, we suffered suddenly a big traffic, an amazing one. We never, we never seen such amount of traffic in our uh, grocery, in our online grocery, and uh, well, we had some products that the people demand at most. For example, the floor, the paper toilet, the mask itself. Um, that was a change in the behavior of the customers that impact, for example, to the supply chain area. They, they had to buy um, from other providers to, to, to see where the, they had to look for these kind of products in other countries, for example. So it was a, um, a very stressful situation for supply chain and of course for us because the high demand that we had. And uh, in terms of search, uh, well, as you mentioned in the slides, uh, it changes uh, the behavior a lot in, the, in, in customers. So thanks for, for this kind of uh, search that we have right now. We can react to the demand of the people yeah. and offer the products that they, they, they need. Thank you, Hisa. So uh, the, uh, another question is about the data flow. So uh, the fact that you showed how the data is ingested was appreciated. Uh, and uh, the question was, um, uh, so a uh, very specific questions from, from Rene about the data flow that mentioned the concept of pod. And uh, the question was what would be encapsulated in a pod and what's the purpose of the, okay. the pod? Well, um, actually a pod is a, a workload it's uh, something, it's a concept from Kubernetes. It's not something special, but we are, it's a small application we can deploy in Kubernetes. So in, in, the, in terms of uh, the search, what we are encapsulated in the pod is a small application that ingest, takes all the evidence coming from the front end and pass the event to a data flow to transform from a specific time window this information into packet files. That's it's a quite simple um, concept. 
uh, taken from Kubernetes is, is a technical one. Uh, so maybe one, one last question, or maybe a two, if, if we have time, um, about the. Um, so it seems like a, a, a long journey. You, you mentioned sixty six years in the beginning, so there were a lot of challenges to address. Um, we we had questions about like what was the biggest challenge for 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 you, and especially about uh, Google uh, Google Cloud uh, platform. Was that connected to Google? The cloud or maybe not what was the biggest well, we challenge had, we we had several big big really big challenge so from the last six uh, since the last last six years we had for example the first one was to to deploy the first uh, uh all-in-one solution this kind of platforms that you can have from uh traditional vendors and uh, the second one where um, was to realize that the platform wasn't enough for us, for our business, and to make a plan to the platform everything, and that that happens maybe in, in two three years. So it was a very short time of of uh, life of this kind of platforms. So and the challenge here was to how to decouple all the single pieces that this kind of a platform has to chop all the platform into pieces and uh, deploy this kind of functionality from scratch into Google Cloud using modern technology like Kubernetes or modern technology like uh, Spark Jobs or Apache Bean or whatever. You are half available on the cloud. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Borja. Thanks, Thank everyone. You very much.